Hi guys, good afternoon. Little Mr. and Riot here, coming from just outside Wrexham. Um, yeah, in my lovely home still. This afternoon, I visited an eating disorder unit, which is not too far from here. It's not the one that um, I was under because I've never actually been um, admitted into a clinic where I was treated. I managed to treat my eating disorder through obviously running and fitness and supportive friends. But it's shocking to see that there are girls as young as seven years old and boys who struggle to put food actually into their mouth or struggle to keep food down. There are a couple of common facts here. There is anorexia, there is bulimia, there's overeating, there's anorexic bulimics that put laxatives into their system so they just get rid of everything. And there are also alcoholic bulimic anorexics where they would rather drink alcohol throughout the day, put no food into their mouths because it's almost like a calorie trade-off that one's better than the other. Also women that are breastfeeding that are bulimics, uh, women that are pregnant that are bulimics stroke anorexic as well. It's very common eating disorders in the UK and obviously I'm here to endorse fitness and health and good fitness role models and to make sure that you guys are all out there getting your trainers on, getting your mates together, talking about all kinds of things and more importantly finding the perfect sports bras to make sure that you're nice and supportive when you're out on those roads. But there is a darker side to why I am speaking to you again this afternoon. Little Miss from Riot has been formed because in 2007 I did embark on going from a 32C up to a 32G because of the age of between 11 and 14 when I should have been developing and my bus should have been coming quite nice. My periods had stopped and I was extreme dieting which basically means that my chest didn't develop properly. One breast was bigger than the other. Um, I could literally pull my skin from here out to there and one big one was fuller than the other and I never ever ever took my top off before the age of being 26 26 the first time I actually took my top off in front of a bloke which was my boyfriend at the time which is uh he's now unfortunately no longer here he passed away but he used to have to suffer me putting tissues inside my bras when I used to teach aqua aerobics I'd wear two or three bras on top of my swimming costume it's always been something that has been a major conscious thing of mine. There are some women out there who have no issues having size A to B bust and it's fine. But for me, I'm five foot eight, I'm a very, very tall girl and I'm quite naturally curvy as well. So for me, I did not feel feminine without my bust. I paid two, two, sorry, 3700 for my bust and um, I got it from Transform Clinic in Manchester. My boobs are silicone, they're not saline, so mine can probably last up to sort of between 15 and 20, 20 years. They're not PPI implants at all, I had mine uh, done after all that scenario, so mine are fine. I have no problems with them, apart from you do have to massage them regularly. You do have to find the right sports bra, so hopefully now with you guys' help, I will actually find a good sports bra that I can then bring to market for all of you lovely people as well. But before you do embark on doing something like that, I run 60 to 80 miles a week. It is like wearing an armoured vest. They weigh a ton. So when you go up a hill, you are running and people will go past you. So what you've got to remember is just know your body, know yourself. And if you have got a natural heavy bust as well, you'll appreciate that you do need that extra support and extra cushioning. So just in a nutshell, when I actually spoke to these guys this afternoon in this, um, in this eating disorder clinic, some of the girls in there haven't even got any kind of chest. And then when I explained this is obviously what I went and did, I went and had surgery. Um, a lot of the girls have actually opted for it on the NHS. Now, I don't know whether I agree with the NHS pumping money into um, girls having implants. I appreciate it's all to do with self-confidence and those kind of things. But for me, I bought it and I paid for it. So in a nutshell, what are your thoughts? Let me know. You know, do you think that the NHS should be, you know, giving girls money for implants? I believe in giving ladies money for reductions because that can cause a lot of pain in the back. But what do you believe about implants? Do you think the NHS should?
pay for implants. Um, if you could drop me an email, I would be uh, really grateful. You can email me at Hannah dot Sadowska, which is S-A-D-O-W-S-K-A at yahoo.com and uh, we can have a little look at the stats. Let's see who believes that implants should be on the NHS. Thank you very, very much for your time this afternoon again and I'll keep you updated. Thanks. Bye.